Hello everybody, Chris Berry here once again with another uh, banjo lesson, this time uh, on the three finger style of uh, Doc Boggs. This is a tune of his called the Banjo Clog. I'm going to play you the tune first and then teach it. There is tablature for this tune and the link to download the tablature in PDF format is going to be in the description of this video here on YouTube. Uh, so first I'll play the tune. It's in standard C tuning sometimes called Drop C or Minstrel C or Seeger C. Um, it's a real old-time tune for the banjo for a long time. It really was the standard tuning uh, of the banjo. And it's G, C, G, B, D. It's just like open G tuning except the fourth string is tuned down to a C. Here's the tune Banjo Clog. That's how it goes. And uh, there's a lot of left hand motion going on in this tune, but uh, the right hand is quite simple uh, and basically repeats uh, the same pattern over and over again uh, with, uh, with a little variation. So let me show you. I'm going to start the tune, and I'm just going to show you the part that's down here at first. Uh, the chords we're going to be playing with the left hand are in this tuning, C, F, and G. Uh, if you played uh, these tunes in regular G tuning, they're very close to being the same. We have C, which is index finger on the first fret of the second string, and your ring finger on the second fret of the first string. That's C. F is the middle finger on the second fret of the third string. Uh, your first finger stays in the same place uh, on the first fret of the second string, and then your pinky plays the third fret of the first string. That's F and you can play the low C note with that. And then the G chord is the easiest one of all. It's the top three open strings and then just the second fret of the fourth string which you play with your uh, middle finger. So again C, F, G. And the chord progression of this tune is C, F, let's see if I remember right, C, F, C, G, C, F, G, C. Um, you'll, you'll get that uh, pretty quick. The pattern of the right hand, with, uh, with most of Doc Boggs' tunes, and this is not an exception, um, if you're wondering what finger of your right hand you're going to be using to play a string, it's very easy. The thumb plays the thumb string, the fourth string, and the third string. Those three. The index finger plays only the second string, and the middle finger only plays the first string. So your thumb is going to be playing one of these three. Your second finger, index finger, rather, is going to be playing the second string, and then the first string with your middle finger. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Your thumb is going to be in this tune, is playing most of the melody. The melody is pretty sparse. Um, it's really the pattern that makes the tune pretty. So the pattern is eight notes and let me show you what it is. It's going to be thumb, index, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index. So you can think of it as four pairs. Um, each one ends with a note on the index. So there's the first pair, second pair, third pair, last pair. And that 
that's how the pattern goes. So it's going to be thumb index, thumb index, <coughs> excuse me, middle index, thumb index. And I'm starting there with my thumb on the fourth string, then my thumb on the fifth string, middle index thumb on the third string, pattern for the for the majority of the tune. You're going to change chords uh, at the end of each one of those patterns and it, the, the melody varies where your thumb starts a little bit. So in this case uh, for the C chord your thumb starts on the fourth string and then on the F chord your thumb starts on the third string. Exactly the same pattern with the right hand. Thumb index, thumb index, middle index, thumb index. So again, C, F, you're going to start with your thumb on the third string, and then back to C, but this time start on the third string, and then G with your thumb on the fourth string, back to the C with your thumb on the fourth string, F, thumb on the third string, G, this time with your thumb on the uh, third string, and then back to C. And then you end, instead of ending with the pattern, you just end with three plucks, and that's just your uh, index and middle finger on the top two strings, just like that. Um, and that little variation with the plucks is pretty much the only variation in the right hand. So you could do this. That has two plucks at the end, but you're just substituting it for a bit, for a bit of the pattern. Like that. Or at the end. So again, the whole first part of the tune um, goes like this, and I'll do it uh, kind of slowly. Uh, you're going to start on the C chord, thumb on the fourth string, thumb on the third string, thumb on the third string, fourth string, fourth string, fourth string, fourth string third string, Except that last time you would just end. So the first part of the tune again a little faster. And once you have that down, then the the, the trick is to learn the other chords, uh, which again are just C F and G chords and you're going to just be moving that chord progression uh, up and around the neck um, and then one little variation at the top which I'll talk about um, and Doc played it through, he tended to play it like one time through on the bottom and then a few times through up and down and then maybe one time through on the bottom and a few times uh, going up the neck. The chord positions and these are outlined in the tab but these are essentially either barred versions of the C chord or well, they're all they're all closed versions without open strings. Let me let me say that. The uh, the first one you need to know is at the fifth fret you have a C chord. If you just bar the fifth fret, don't bar the fourth string. Just bar the top three strings. That's C chord. I'm sure you have played that before. You don't need to bar the the bass string because it's already at a C. Now if you take a C chord like this down here and move it up, you can move that up, sorry my computer <laughs> went dark on me for a second there, you can move it up and make it, if you, if you move it up each fret, think of just these top two strings, you have C, C sharp, 
D, E, <laughs> let me do that again, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, there is no E sharp, so you write it F. These two notes are part of an F chord, and if you think down here, you have the two open strings, so up here, you have to bar to make the equivalent of those open strings, and here's your F chord. So that's, you're barring across the whole fifth fret, you're putting your middle finger on the sixth fret of the second string, and your pinky or ring finger, I prefer the pinky, on the, uh, on the seventh fret of the first string. And this, you can move this chord all over the fretboard. You just have to remember what what note this one is. So the, here it's an F, and you're also going to be using it two frets higher where it's a G. Okay, the, uh, the other chord, oh, and you're also going to be using it way up here at the 12th fret where it's a C chord, an octave higher than this C chord. So get familiar with that and be able to move it up and down. And also this, this one here too. The, the only other chord uh, that you have to worry about in this is an F shape. You just take the F shape, and again, it's a closed formation if you ignore the bass string. There's no open strings, so you can move it up fret by fret. So F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, there is no B sharp, so this is C. And right here, uh, starting with your index finger on the, let's see, eighth fret of the second string, middle finger on the ninth fret of the third string, and pinky or ring finger, I prefer the pinky, on the uh, tenth fret of the first string. That's also a C chord. And you essentially, you're just going to mix those chord positions up throughout this tune while maintaining that same pattern, either this pattern or this pattern where you pluck twice at the end. So that's the first four notes and then two plucks. Um, and you can do that to sort of ad lib but whatever sounds good to you. You're going to have to move your thumb um, to different positions to make a little melody out of it but here's one way to do it. So C, F, C, G, C, that's the F shape, F, G, and then this little run that Doc does where he, he goes up to the high C chord, but he walks up to it, and he moves the whole chord, don't take the chord off, but he's only using his thumb, and he's going to play 9, 11, 12. So, Again, that little walk up is 9th fret, 11, 12 on the 4th string. So one pass through that might be like this. And then start up here. C, G, F, G, and walk back up. And then you can go right back to the beginning. That's helpful. The tab uh, shows the roll and all the chords in pretty good detail. So I don't think you're going to have too much trouble uh, figuring out this tune. It's a good one. It's fun to play. It's a good practice. You get to learn all these different chords, which uh, can be very useful to you. And uh, it's just a nice sounding tune. And hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.